All right, this is our second day in lesson 6 1. We're going to learn how to solve separable differential equations. And um, this is a differential equation because dy is a differential and dx is a differential. But really, when we put dy divided by dx, we're looking at a change in y over a change in x, a really small change in y over a small change in x. What's that whole thing represent? That's a symbol for the derivative, isn't it? So um, we spent lots of time in this class, months, learning how to go from an equation to can find the derivative of that equation. Now we're going to start with the derivative and we're going to try to work backwards and get the original function for y. So um, step number one when solving differential equations is to separate the variables. If the y's on one side, get the x's on the other side. So is that running or not? Make sure I pushed. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start by multiplying my dx on both sides. I multiply by dx on the left, this dx would cancel off, so I just have a dy on the left. Multiply by dx on the right, here over here. So I've got all the dx, all the x's to the right side of the equation. Now I want to get all the y's to the left. It might be helpful to do this. Rewrite e to the negative y as, anyone know how I can rewrite that so it's not a negative exponent? 1 over e to the y. Yeah. And now it's not negative anymore. Times sine of x, yes. I'd like to get the y's on the left. I don't want having this e to the y on the right. How could I get rid of that e to the y on the right and have it appear over here? Times. Times by e to the y on both sides. So times by e to the y here and here. These would cancel. So that's my first goal, is always to try to get the y's and x's separated with the equal sign between them. So usually we try to get the y's to the left and the x's to the right, but that doesn't necessarily have to be done that way. You could have the y's on the right and the x's on the left. All right, second step, once you get that done, is always to take the integral on both sides. What's the integral of e to the y dy? Stumped you, huh? E to the y, yeah, just e to the y. Okay. Equals. What's the integral of sine? Negative, negative cosine. Negative cosine, good. Now, technically, you should put plus a constant, a plus c on both sides. But, I mean, I don't write this down, but if I put plus constant 1 here and then plus constant 2 here, so you have two constants, then if you subtract constant 1 off both sides, this would cancel out, so you wouldn't have anything over here on the left anymore. If you take constant 2 minus constant 1, you're going to get another constant. So. Generally what we do is just put a plus c on the right side. And that's going to represent both these constants being combined together somehow. All right, so first step was separate the y's and the x's with the equal sign in the middle. Second step, integrate both sides. Third step, solve for y. So how could I get rid of this e? So instead of e to the y, it just says y here. A natural, natural log and e, and e to a power are inverse operations. So Right, if you take the natural log of e to the y equals the natural log, I mean, you can't do it at each piece, you have to do it up the entire right side here. So put parentheses here. And remember with logarithm, you, that's an exponent that can be moved out front. So you're going to have y times natural log of e. What's the natural log of e equal? 1. 1. So you have y times 1, which would be y, equals the natural log of the negative cosine of x plus c. That's what we call the general solution to the problem. It's a general solution um, oops, because we don't have the constant yet. We don't know what the constant is. Okay? If you look at your notes, note, sheet I, note sheet that I gave you from the video, um, as you change the value of c, this curve will change when you graph it. So there's an infinite number of constants you could put here. So there's an infinite number of different graphs you could get. You kind of get this family of different, different graphs. Okay? And if you look at your, uh, your paper, I'll put it on the video here. If you look right here, okay, you'll see a bunch of different curves. That's just, what, five of them. They're showing you five of them. But really, there'd be an infinite number of different curves you could have, depending on what C is going to be. Now, if they give you a specific value that the curve has to go through, which they do in this case, they say, when x equals pi halves, y equals 2. Now, our textbook's probably not going to show it that way. They're probably going to write it this way. y of pi halves equals 
equals 2. In other words, y equals 2 when x is pi halves. So all we're going to do now is plug 2 in for y and pi halves in for x down here. So 2 in for y, so you're going to have 2 equals natural log of the negative cosine of pi halves plus c. And cosine of pi halves, you're going to think about your inner circle. There's pi halves. That's the point zero 0,1 right there. This is your cosine. This is your sine. So the cosine is going to be what? Zero. zero. So you get 2 equals the natural log of 0 plus c, which would just be c. Now we have to solve for c. That's what we're trying to do. We're plugging. So our, our first step was separate the x's and y's. Second step, integrate both sides. Third step, solve for y. Fourth step, plug in your values of x and y and try to find c. Now, I don't, there's two ways to think about this. One way to think about it is remember that natural log is e. Remember that logarithms always equal exponents. So this 2 is an exponent. What we really know now is that e to the second power equals c. Just changing a logarithm in exponential form, you go e to the second power equals c. The other way you can do it, it's called exponentiating both sides, is you can say, well, if 2 is equal to natural log of c, then e to the 2 power equals e to the natural log of c. You can put an e on both sides. Again, that's called exponentiating both sides. Okay? I've probably not shown you that before, but that's a, a new, um, new tool you can use to solve equations. So now you have e squared on the left. What's going to happen here if you have an e and a natural log? Yeah, they undo each other. They're inverses. So you just get c on the right side. So our constant's e squared. So now we have what's called, not our general solution, but now it's called our particular solution. Because now we're getting one specific curve that goes through the point pi halves 2. And that solution is going to be, I'm just going to copy this down, but instead of a C here, I'm going to put E squared. Y equals natural log of negative cosine of X plus E squared. That's called a particular solution to that differential equation. So we started with a derivative equation, and we came up with the original uh, function. Any questions about that?